Hello, you guys. <laughs> um, I'm gonna set this up here, and uh, the most important part about this video is not what you see, but what you hear. <laughs> so, forgive the bad angles and everything. Um, but anyway, um, I just wanted to put up a video for you guys right now, and um, I wanted to, um, first of all, check to make sure it's recording. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, so, um, you guys, I just want to share something with you right now, um, and the theme is, uh, God's, um, grace and the things that he gives you, gives us, his, his children, his followers, his believers. So, um, um, this is a pretty funny day, um, already, because, um, I'll give you the very short version, but it's Halloween, first off, and, um, I had, I had nothing to do today, this morning, um, I had one plan, I had one plan today, um, and that was to, um, go to my mom and stepdad's help, my mom and stepdad's house, and help them load up their DJ equipment. Um, my stepdad is a DJ. He's also a wedding officiant, like he marries people. And my mom is his helper, but she's also like a wedding coordinator type person. She does like all the stuff. And um, so they have equipment in their van and they shouldn't really be heave hoeing on that equipment anyway, but they both have um, they both have some pretty messed up shoulder problems right now. Um, they've had some shoulder issues. They, they are scheduled for a surgery soon at the end of this month and my stepdad later. But um, anyway, so I go to the weddings for them and I load their van up before they leave home with everything, all the speakers and everything. And then um, after that, I usually go with them or in their van or in my own car to the venue, um, unload the equipment, set up. Usually we have a reception location and a, um, ceremony location or a cocktail hour. So usually there's more than one place where computers, speakers, and, um, cables and stuff are set up. So that's what I do for, that's what I do. That's what I do for them. And, um, Anyway, so I was running behind schedule today because, like I said, I had nothing else to do. I'm just sitting around home, taking it easy, drinking coffee all morning, reading books, just enjoying myself. And um, God is really awesome. Um, but I got to the point where I was like, I was trying to wait for my stepmom to be done with the laundry and everything so I could wash my work clothes and because um, I need them today. And... Um, and uh, I waited way too long, and I was taking way too long to do everything. And I was like, well, you know, I should have enough time. I should be able to work, you know. And um, my clothes will be dry. Everything will be fine. But then when it came down to it, I got out of the shower, and the old load in the laundry and the dryer was still drying. And I was like, even if I put them in right now, I don't have enough time for them to get dry and head, head over there. So I was like, oh, no worries there. I'll just wear my second outfit that I have, my second work outfit. And um, it's kind of like a second best option. Um, it doesn't have my name on the shirt and that sort of thing. Um, and my mom says she wants me to wear black pants instead of khaki pants. So this meant I was wearing the khaki pants and the no-named shirt. So I'm like, okay, no problem. Just pop that on right there, grab all my stuff, head out the door, everything's great. Everything is just so great. And I'm like, I know I'm running a little bit behind right now. Because I was like, man, I'm, when I'm going, I'm going. I need to go now. And um, I got going and I was like, man, I'm running kind of late. Um, they're waiting on me to load up some subwoofers in their car. And then I'm riding with them to our destination. And um, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm late. I'm going to make them late. Oh, shoot. Okay. I was like, I was like, okay, well, what do we need to do? So... I reached out to my mom and I was like, hey, do you want me to just come there and help you? 
like um i'm running late but do you want do you want to wait for me and like you want me to come anyway and load up everything or is there a way that you guys can do it and um i just meet you at the venue i couldn't get a hold of her and i couldn't get hold get a hold of my stepdad and i sent all these text messages sent a text message to my mom called them a bunch of times and i couldn't get anyone so i'm i'm like oh shoot well crap man which way do i go um i'm either supposed to go to their house as original plan said or if they're already on their way to the venue just go to the venue the two places are in different locate in different directions so what happened was i ended up going all the way to my mom's house and they were already gone and um it's funny because i saw my brother for like a really really brief moment it was really funny i don't see my brother devin too much but um because he's he's a pretty he's a he's a pretty busy guy he's a pretty busy guy and I am too, um, but I'm thankful that the Lord has given us more time together in the future. And um, so uh, I was like, okay, they're already gone. I just got all the way over here, and now I gotta just like go to them, and I'm gonna be late, errer, later, errer. And now I'm like, I'm on my way, and then I finally heard from my mom and my stepdad, and they were like, guys, I told them where I was at, what was going on, and at this point. We're supposed to be there at 2.30. I'm pushing 3 o'clock right now is my ETA. 3 o'clock is my ETA, so that's pretty bad. And so helping them get set up is pretty much out of the question as far as I can tell. And I hear back from my stepdad, and um, he's like, Hey, don't worry about setting up for us. Just come when we have to break everything down tonight at 10 o'clock. So that was a huge relief. And, um, you know, I love helping them out and, um, I have accepted this responsibility and, um, I know that I'm a big help to them, but at the same time, um, that was a really big weight rolled off my shoulders. Um, I've had kind of a rough, rough past couple of days with my family, um, not concerning them, um, my stepmom, uh, my, um, dad and, yeah, I've been having a rough time with my dad and my stepmom. Um, pertaining to my brother and just some stuff going on at home. It's gotten pretty crazy. So um, being able to take it easy today was great. Um, I didn't feel lazy. I, was, I wasn't I was being lazy. I just wasn't really doing anything. And, you know, sometimes we feel like we need to just go, 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 go. And God is awesome. And he will, like, propel you supernaturally into so many different awesome things. But that doesn't change the fact that we need to stop and rest sometime, sometimes. And um, what I was reading this morning was backing that up um, very greatly. And so here I am. Um, I was on my way back. Uh, I was on my way to the venue when they told me to not go. So I went and got coffee. I'm here sitting at the coffee place. Um, got my books. I'm waiting. I'm trying. I see a van behind me and it looks just like my mom and Brian's van. That's so funny. But I know it's not them because they're not around here. But, um, so I might be linking up with my cousin Dylan here in a little bit. Um, he's the same age as me. He's a Christian. He's a Catholic. He is like really so mega amazing awesome. Times a billion. And, um, so uh, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet because... Um, I might be I may have heard back from him already. He may have said something while this video is recording and I don't want to miss it. But anyway, um I wanted to say what was on my heart and um it's God has given me the most precious gift of being able to tell you guys what's going on. Um we internalize things and keep things to ourselves so much and we don't always tell God everything what's going on, but he knows. He already knows what's going on. But that doesn't mean, that still doesn't mean you can't tell him everything. But um, I'm just blessed that I can share this stuff with you guys. Um, it means a lot to me. And um, that that God has given me this platform um, to speak out and outreach with you guys. But um, anyway, um, I'm almost done. So the, the end is um, the throwback to a video I posted years ago on my channel. You guys can see it. It's called Accept Yourself. And... Um, this video is a little a bit different. It's kind of like an improvement or an upgrade on that. Um, so 
this book I got, Joel Osteen, Next Level Thinking. Um, it's amazing. He's amazing. He has a lot of haters, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of haters that don't like him, think he's a joke, think he's think he's a game. We think this is a game. You think this is a joke. You think this guy just like has all this money and like he's just like a great pastor and he's conning everyone? No, not at all. Not at all. And um, read his book for yourself. Look into him yourself. Watch his sermons yourself. Don't listen to anybody else who says anything bad about him. Um, because most of the time, and from what I can see, I mean, nobody's perfect, but from what I can see, you know, everything that people have said about him has been misconstrued or has been a misunderstanding. And um, anyway, so I got this book. God gave me this book. God gave me this book. I was looking for another book. I went to two different places trying to find this other book, his other book called The Power of Favor. It's amazing, too. It is amazing. 10 out of 10 stars, read it, read it again, read it every day, read it, read it, read it, buy it, own it, keep it, sell it, um, but only if you have more to keep for yourself, and um, so I'm looking, I borrowed my mom's, I got it for my mom for Mother's Day, The Power of Favor, and I borrowed it, she read halfway through, she took a break, because I said something negative about Joel Osteen about a month ago is the reason why she stopped reading his book. See how powerful our words are, our influences, our influence is. You know, it makes such a difference, day and night difference, when we say something great versus when we say something that that isn't so great. Um, God wants to prosper us. He doesn't want us to spiral into oblivion and stay downcast. Even if we are suspicious about something, it's not a good idea to um, carry out that suspicion as if we're like detectives and we have to break everything down and 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 fault find that's what that leads to or what that is is fault finding finding people's mistakes and exploiting them it's not good it's not healthy even if they're true everybody makes mistakes we don't need to focus on them that's the whole point but anyway so i'm trying to find the power of favor in target they don't have it they don't have any christian books in target that i could tell i was pretty disappointed but um then I go to Walmart and they didn't have it either. And I was like, wow, I just saw it in my mind beforehand. I'm reading my mom's book and I'm like, I am reading this. I finished it. Uh, I'm reading it again and I'm going to buy one for me and I'm going to buy one for my mom, mom, my grandmother, my mom's mom, my mom, Rena, and um, whom's birthday it just was. So I'm like, I'm going to buy two of these things. I can see them in Walmart, fully stocked on the shelf in my mind. And I get there and they're not there. And I look around and what do I see? This book. And um, I don't know how much the other one was going to cost. Um, it doesn't really matter. But the point is, the other book probably cost about 20, 20 bucks, 18 bucks, eight, between 18 and 26 dollars, is my guess. And I was going to, uh, of course, pay it for both of them. Um, there's a Bible verse that says you have to pay the cost for truth. Truth comes with a cost. Um, I'm misquoting it terribly, but basically, if you want something good, you have to pay for it, basically. Kind of coincides with the whole, if you want to live, you have to work. You can't sit around and not work. You have to work. So, um, I saw this book. Okay, I'm going into Walmart. going to spend probably about 40 or 50 bucks on Joel Osteen books, which is great. I love to give him money. I love to give him money. But... This book was sitting there on the shelf for $5.97. And I was like, bro, I didn't even know this book existed. You know, this is amazing. And God is like, hey, you want something that you just didn't even know you wanted? And it's great. And it's greater than what you were looking for. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I really wanted the other. He's like, yeah, but look at this. And I was like, okay, amen, hallelujah. So I got this book and it's amazing. Uh, I'm almost done. Anyway, the whole reference to the accept yourself video comes back to this point. This chapter, where I'm at right now in this book, this book is hitting hard. It's helping me greatly, immensely, through the stuff I'm going through right now. Um, not the book. The book isn't. God is. God is. Give him his glory, always. Don't let anything steal his glory. It's all God's design. It's all God's doing. Um, but look at the title of this chapter, if you can see it from here. It's Approve Yourself. So, I want to read this uh, page to you guys, um, keeping this video a little shorter. Um, I would love to go longer, and I will, but I'm not going to for the sake of my cousin who's probably waiting on my response. Oh, chapter 8, Approve Yourself. 
Too many people go around feeling as though something is wrong on the inside. They don't really like who they are. They focus on their faults and weaknesses. They're constantly critical toward themselves. There's a recording of everything they've done wrong that is always playing in their mind. You are impatient. You blew your diet yesterday. You lost your temper. You are still struggling with that addiction. You should be ashamed of yourself. Sound familiar? <sighs> they wonder why they're unhappy and don't realize it's because they have a war going on inside. But you're not supposed to go through life feeling wrong about yourself. You're not. Quit focusing on your faults. This is, this is a list. Make this little list. Quit focusing on your faults. Quit overanalyzing your weaknesses. Quit beating yourself up because you're not where you thought you would be. Stop it. Stop beating yourself up for where you are because it's not where you think you're gonna be. Just like when I saw this book, I could have been like, man, this freaking sucks. I got this Joel Osteen book that's not even the one I was looking for. How crappy is this? Walmart is so bad. They never have anything I want. I can't ever find what I'm looking for. And you know what? That's that direction. That's that direction you don't wanna go in, obviously. Um, but anyway, that's the whole key right there. Um, and improving yourself. Stop beating yourself up about it. Um, you know, you are where you are for a reason. And it's not because, well, I made this choice and that's why I'm where I am because blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, that stuff is true too, but to a degree. Um, but so God has a plan for you. He put you here for a reason. You are right where you're supposed to be because that's where you're supposed to be. Trust him. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if it looks like, dang, man, I was supposed to sell 79 books and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've only sold, I've only sold 60 and today's my last day. This just doesn't make sense, Lord. How come I'm only selling 60 right now? I can't believe this is happening. Don't worry. He has a plan that you can't see it. You can't see all of his plan. None of us can. I can't see all of his plan. And this is where the trust of God comes in. This is where you have to trust God. Trust him. Okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. This is such an awesome privilege to be able to be here and do this for you guys. Um, I love you, like I said, and um, enjoy um, this little Starbucks chat from my car. Goodbye.